Hello everyone and welcome back to our third lecture in Python programming and I hope you're enjoying the course so far. This course was intended to basically give you uh, the baby steps to learning more advanced concepts in computer science but through Python. So please don't forget to leave your reviews that other students can know more about this course, how do you like it, uh, things to improve, um, and I'd really appreciate that. So in this lecture, we're going to dive into lists, and lists are very, very important in Python. So lists in Python are array-based. Now, what do I mean by array-based? It means that you can actually store data in a very organized manner in lists. So let's visualize this. Let's forget everything we know so far about lists. Let's say you were trying to build a wall. The foundation of a wall starts with bricks. So let's say you are placing a horizontal um, row of bricks, one after the other. Each brick represents a data, but then your wall is basically the list. So that's exactly how you can visualize a Python list. They are usually in the form of square brackets, and then whatever is in within the square brackets is basically the data that you want to be stored. And lists are mutable, and we said anything that's mutable means that you can change it. So lists can be altered. There's a very important um, concept of lists, which is list slicing. This is mostly used when you want to access specific elements of a list. So I'm going to start with a variable, which is LST. I'm going to set it equal to a list of ints, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then when I say list of square bracket 2, this is basically giving an instruction to Python to return back to you whatever is at index 2. So some, Python, some um, programming languages start at index 1, but Python always starts at index 0. So your index 0 is 1, your index 1 is 2, your index 2 is 3, so on, so on. So when I say list of 2, that means I have to go to index 2. So 0, 1, 2, that value over there is 3. The next uh, form of slicing is when you say 3 colon negative 1. So when you use columns, for example, negative 1 in Python is always referring to the last element of the list. Don't forget that. So if I were to say 3, 2, negative 1, because the column is specifying an your starting point and then your ending point. So I start at index 3 all the way to the last element, but it does not include the last element. So let's go to index 3. So we count 0, 1, 2, 3. It's going to be a 4. What this is going to return is 4, 5, 6, and 7, but it does not include 8. That's a rule in Python. List slicing can have up to three parameters, and parameters are basically input instructions to give to your computer. So here I want to access index one to five, but not including five. The two is telling you how many steps you should count after every index. So let us visualize this. Let's go to index one, which is going to be two, and then you want it all the way to five. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. So it's basically going to be from two to six. And then this two here basically is going to start at two. And then you count two steps after two, which takes you to the next element. So it's going to return back two. You count two steps. So one, two, it will return back four. Then you count again two, so one, two. It doesn't return back six because six is at index five. And then as we said, you were saying index 1 to 5, but not including 5. So, I mean, if you're confused, just um, repeat the uh, what I said just now and try to follow up. Okay? There are a lot more tactics you can find online for list slicing, but these are basically the three main um, types of slicing. And slicing can also be performed on strings, because strings basically have a data of letters, you can say. So it's basically like um, how many letters or um, what part of a word that you want to access. So list slicing comes in handy. Before I get into nested lists, I want to do some practice of list slicing. So let's say I say array equals to 
um, three, five, seven, nine, ten. And then I want to print whatever my list slicing will return back. So I want to access the third item of the list, which is going to be at index two. I'm not saying the third index. So let's print this. It's going to give you seven. But let's say I want to access, I want this list to give me, let's say from index zero to the last index, but we're going to count two steps. This gives three and seven because you count, start at three, one, two, seven, nine, ten, doesn't include ten. Okay, so these are just some examples. A nested list is basically a list within a list. So in Python, you can have like multiple lists that are basically within an enclosed main list. So here I have one, two, and seven as regular ints. But the data type here is a list because you have another list that is within the big list here. So you have a list that has three, four, and five. So if I want to say list, get me the second, uh, the value at index two, that gives you three, four, and five because at index two, it's a list. But if I were to say uh, list at index two of index zero, that means we go to index two. So we start zero, one, two, that's your index two. And then give me the uh, value at the first, at the index zero of that list. So it's going to be three because you are specifying uh, exactly what you want from that particular list. So let me do an example. So instead, let me cancel nine and instead I'm going to do one, two, uh, another three. So we have a list within a list within a list. And now I want to print array at index zero, one, two, three. So let's print at index three. As you can see, it's giving you this entire thing here. But let's say I want to access the uh, last element. As you can see here, it doesn't return back three because three, this is a list here, it's not an int. But if I were to say at index zero, it's a three here because here's a trick. You have three lists, so you can basically have three indexes to um, to get a very specific element. There's another thing about lists in Python that is very important, and it comes. <clears throat> it's basically the length function. So it's like you want to calculate how many elements there are in a list. It's not the indexes; it's the elements. So if I were to say print length of array. Whoops, sorry. Let's have a look here. It's going to be a five. Why? Because we have one, two, three. This whole thing here is considered an element. So it's the fourth element, and then here's the fifth. We're not counting by indexes. There's a difference between an index, because when you're counting the number of elements, you start with one. But if you're counting by indexes, you are starting by zero. There are mutating methods for lists. There are two main methods. There is append and extend. So let's say if you wanted to add a number to the main list, you use append. So if I had a list of one, two, and three, and I wanted to add a four, so I just say list.append, because append is a function. So your list is going to end up looking like one, two, three, and four. But extending is when you want to add two lists together. So actually, it's better if I show you examples. Here, let's say I wanted to add 100 to array. So I'm going to use append 100. I'm going to print array. So our resulting list will look like that. You see the 100 has been added here. But let's say I also want to add another list after 100. So array.extend to 4. As you can see here, you have also 2 and 4. But what happens if 
Instead of using extend, I use append here. I'm going to try and let you guess that. Have you guessed it? Let's have a look now. Oh, there's a big difference now. You have a list within the main list because you are basically just adding instead of extending. Extending is adding two lists together, or in other words, you can say concatenating. But appending is just adding an element, whether whatever data type it is, to the list. So that's something um, you have to look out for in Python. There are other ways to mutate, mutate lists. So for example, you can change the value by accessing a certain index. So I have one, two, three, four, and five. Let's say I wanted to set the value at the second index to six. So I go to one, two, so I go to index zero, one, two. So the second index's value is three. If I use this line, your list would be one, two, six, four, five, because you actually mutated the list. There's also dot pop, which basically removes the last element. So if I were to call it on list.pop, it's going to remove five and your resulting list will be one, two, three, and four. You can say list.pop three, but that doesn't mean you are popping three. You are popping the element at index three. So you start at zero, one, two, three. So you're going to remove four. 